Here's a question for you. Does modding Skyrim on your PlayStation tank your frame rate? Hi, I'm Ram Nexus. I make videos looking at technical aspects of some of my favorite games. And recently I've been looking at Skyrim on PlayStation. The Skyrim mod community is going really strong and there are some mods out there that can make the game look really nice on PlayStation. But I've often wondered, am I doing more harm than good by loading up Skyrim with all these mods? So I decided to have a look by running a few frame rate and frame timing tests. And today I'll share with you what I found. It's so good to see you again. I reckon I will make a similar video for Xbox consoles, but as you may know, there are fewer restrictions on what can be included in mods for the Xbox and on PC, so there's no point making a console comparison video. On the PlayStation, Sony restricted Bethesda to only allowing mods that did not introduce any new assets, which uh, includes new textures and models and scripts, etc. So in short, the types of mods available for Skyrim on PlayStation are more restrictive than on Xbox and PC. But as you'll see, this is non-stop modders doing some amazing things to Skyrim on PlayStation. It is genuinely really impressive. I do tend to pack a lot of background info and other ramblings into my videos. So if you're just after the frame rate results, feel free to skip ahead to that chapter. In this video, we'll start by looking at my results with unmodded Skyrim on the PlayStation 4 Pro and the PlayStation 5. I'll then show you which mods I installed on both consoles, all 60 of them. Then we'll look at the impact those mods had on frame rate. I just mentioned a couple of other things before I go on. Unlike some games, Skyrim does not have an in-game frame rate tool. So it's a bit hard for me to perfectly replicate actions between each version of the game and compare them directly. So I'm not looking to generate detailed frame time metrics here. I'm not looking for the lowest 1%, etc. The point of this video is just to look for large obvious differences, if there are any. If we don't find any differences, then that in itself is a good result. Don't live in a house with dogs if you want to make YouTube videos. I will sum up the key results I find in a single chart at the end of this video. But of course, we should start by looking at how well Skyrim runs without any mods in vanilla mode. To do this, I captured footage of a couple of cities and I repeatedly ran the attack by the first dragon you encounter in the game is called Mermolnia at the Watchtower, as you probably remember. So I've done this fight quite a few times now, and I found that this fight with the flame and the smoke and lots of NPCs running around really puts the consoles through their paces. It's quite taxing. On the PlayStation 4 Pro, I'm running Skyrim Anniversary Edition with all Creation Club content installed. Skyrim runs at a native 4K. That is, it runs at 4K without any upscaling required, which is really cool and it targets 30 frames a second. Indoors, you can see Skyrim hits that 30 frames per second comfortably. FPS 6 to 30 when walking through the cities of White Run, Rift and... I used to be an adventurer like you. Then I took an arrow in the knee. And Solitude as well. However, wandering the great outdoors can make you lose a couple of frames down to 27. Looking out from the bridge in River Run, FPS dipped to 26 at times. For the dragon fight, it sits at 27 at the start of the fight, drops to 22 when walking through the smoke, and the lowest score I saw was 19 or 20 when receiving a face full of dragon breath. If you like what you've seen in the video so far, 
perhaps consider giving me a like. I'd appreciate that. If you're interested in looking at the technical aspects of Bethesda games, then please consider subscribing. I've got one video there looking at the impact that landmarks have on our sense of immersion in open world games. And I use examples from 20 different games to um, demonstrate their importance. That video was a lot of fun to make. Just like on the PlayStation 4 Pro, Skyrim runs in 4K resolution on the PlayStation 5. Skyrim aims for 60 frames a second on the PlayStation 5, which is the key improvement over the PlayStation 4 Pro, where it only hits 30 frames a second. When the PlayStation 5 was first released, you could only play Skyrim in a PlayStation 4 Pro backwards compatible mode, but the game has been patched and now runs as a native PlayStation 5 app. Graphically, I can see no difference between the PlayStation 4 Pro and the PlayStation 5 versions of the game. Feel free to check out my previous Skyrim video where I did a comprehensive comparison of the graphics of the two systems. As you can see from this footage, I found that vanilla Skyrim ran at 60 FPS when looking out over the river from the bridge in Riverwood. Also 60 FPS when running through White Run, fresh from the wilds. through Riften. Never done an honest day's work in your life for all that coin you carry, hey lass. And through Solitude. I'm a little busy at the moment. Smoke and fire at the watchtower didn't impact frame rate. And even a face with a dragon breath didn't cause any drop frames. In all my testing of vanilla Skyrim on the PlayStation 5, it stuck hard to the 60 frames per second cap, with only one exception. And that was when you absorbed your first Dragon Soul, where it dropped down to here we see 52 frames a second. I looked around for other ways to tax the game's frame rate. For example, I jumped on a horse and galloped through Dragon Bridge, but frame rate just wouldn't budge, which is really good to know. It's very solid. There are a few ways I could have gone about assessing the impact of mods on frame rate. It didn't make sense to focus on just one mod at a time because that would have taken ages and would have made for a pretty boring video. So instead, I made up a typical load list. This is a list of mods which I do use or would like to use. I'll run through the mods I use in a second. I base this list on a couple of load order posts that I found online and YouTube videos about PlayStation mods, including some from Neuftorius and Nathlar. So maybe check out their PlayStation playlist for a better look at some of the mods that I've used. I'll put their links in my notes section. I'll put my mods list in the notes below in the load order that I used. There are 61 mods on the list. They include the obligatory patches. They also include lighting mods, both indoor, outdoor, and there's a couple of other mods in there. I used Obsidian Weathers. It was the only weather mod I installed. I know there are a few others out there, but I do like Obsidian Weather. I included a bunch of settlement mods too. They improved all cities and major settlements. The improvements of these mods made to the game, especially for those of you who have played many hours of Skyrim, and would like to see a change. It's really quite impressive. These include changes to the smaller settlements as well, like Rorikstead, Iverstead, Riverwood, and the Majors Cottage. And you'll see the improvements made to Whiterun, Riften and Solitude as I show my frame rate results. I included some NPC and follower mods. Note the multiple follower system mod, although it's really useful, it doesn't prevent your followers from fighting each other. <laughs> I had to actually confiscate Mercurio's fireball staff as the splash damage was triggering Janassa a bit too often.
the multiple follower mod allows you to have, I think, at least four followers. But I had three, which I thought was enough. It was um, getting a bit crowded at times. But I wanted multiple followers because I wanted to see if having multiple followers would impact frame rate on the game. I like the guard armor changes on Xbox and PC. They have an excellent improved guard armor mod, but the PlayStation mod does work well. It's a nice change. I also added extra named PCs to settlements, which fills them out a bit. I quite like the True Alteration Armor Visuals mod, which I guess um, could come under the combat mods, of which there are three other combat mods. Here we go. I included some texture mods. I mean, there are some uh, different textures used as part of the Settler mods as well. I installed a bunch of environment mods. I thought Interesting Roads and Nordic Ruins were maybe a bit over the top when I first tried them, but I like them now. and. Skyrim looks a little bit plain without them. The cherry blossoms are part of the Spring Trees mod, but I like the change in colour they provide. Having played Skyrim for many hours, it's a nice change. I've also included three sound mods and a few utility mods, including Easy Weather Change, which helped capturing um, sunny gameplay footage for this video. The World Map mod does also look good. The one utility mod I would have loved to have tested was an improved field of view mod. Unfortunately, those mods no longer work on Skyrim for PlayStation since the anniversary edition update. They still work on the Xbox though. I have worked to ensure load order does not crash the game, though I am happy to admit I may not have them in the most optimized order. For example, I'm not sure whether all the indoor lighting mods I've installed work as intended, but the game does run and it looks really good. And as I said to the nuns at my primary school, I ain't going to touch it anymore. According to Bethesda, there are over 8,000 mods for the PlayStation. The chances are high that I have not included mods that you use. Just be aware, though, that running these tests does take quite a bit of time. I find it fun, but I do it as a hobby. So I'm not likely to go back and retest any other mods. Skyrim modded on the PlayStation 4 Pro. As on vanilla Skyrim, the PlayStation 4 Pro runs Skyrim with my mod list at 30 frames a second when indoors. When wandering about, it can drop to about 28. Looking out over the river, frame rate dropped down to 23, which was interesting. Within the cities, it can also drop a frame or two here in White Run, when looking down over the city, it gets down to 27. When fighting the dragon, we start at 27, but quickly drop to 22, walking through the fire and the smoke. Frame rate did drop down to 18 when I was being strafed by the dragon from above, which looked pretty cool, I've got to admit. And briefly, it dropped down to 17 when receiving another dose of Dragon Breath before being chewed like a, like a dog's plaything. With the same mod list installed on PlayStation 5, Skyrim runs at 60 frames a second indoors, no problems. Even wandering outdoors, it stayed at 60. In the cities, there was the very occasional dip by a single frame, which is hardly even worth reporting. And it, so let's just say it's stuck to 60 in cities. Riften and Solitude both look so good with these mods installed, which is partly why I use them for testing. And you know well, I barely have any coin to call my own. Need something? That gallop over the Dragon Bridge didn't impact frame rate at all, although this footage does show the change that the Great Cities mod does make to Dragon Bridge. 
During the dragon fight, the smoke did not impact frame rate. Frame rate went down to 51, thanks to the dragon breath at one point, and then down to 49 when you absorbed your first dragon soul. So what can we make of these results? As I mentioned at the start, my goal here was not to obtain detailed performance metrics, but instead to look for large differences and also find out what the lowest frame rates for each system was. I didn't talk about frame timing much in this video, and that's because the frame timing graphs that I saw didn't show anything unexpected. I noticed no unusual frame timing issues at all. But onto frame rate, on the PlayStation 4 Pro, adding the 60 mods generated only minor dips in frame rate. Some dips were so small they could be counted off as error, but there are a couple of locations that generated frame drops. The first was the panning shot of White Run from the steps of Dragon Ridge, where frame rate was locked at 30 on vanilla Skyrim, but was consistently down to 27 with mods enabled. The second location was overlooking the river from the Riverwood Bridge. FPS was down to 26 on vanilla Skyrim, but dropped even more down to 23 with mods enabled. These dips in frame rate are probably a result of additional assets in the scene. PlayStation mods cannot introduce new assets, but they can replicate existing assets, such as adding more trees and rocks which is what we see here. I anticipate the water and terrain mod, which noticeably improves the look of the water, may also be impacting frame rate on the PlayStation 4 Pro. On the PlayStation 5, Skyrim Anniversary Edition stuck to 60 frames a second almost constantly in both vanilla and modded versions of the game. This was a very welcome result. The only time FPS dipped was when fighting the dragon, and this was true for vanilla and for the modded game. I don't think these dips would have negatively impacted my gameplay experience, so to speak. They would not have made Skyrim any less fun to play. Control was not impacted, and I would likely have not even noticed the drops during normal gameplay. So, in summary, even with a realistic load list of 60 mods installed, Skyrim on the PlayStation stayed close to its intended frame rate on both the PlayStation 4 Pro and PlayStation 5. The 4 Pro showed more dips, but they were not large and not game breaking. Overall, I say the impact of these mods was low on frame rate and there was no impact on gameplay, which is awesome. Well, that was a fun video to make. Thanks for watching it. I hope you found it interesting. I think I'll do a few other similar comparisons on Xbox consoles and I'll also look at how modding impacts Fallout 4. Okay, thanks for watching. Ram Nexus out.